from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 18th, 2019. We open with memorials and commemorations held around the world today to mark the 25th anniversary of the deadly terror attack on the Jewish Center in Buenos Aires, Argentina. On July the 18th of 1994 at 9.53 a.m. local time, a terrorist drove a van loaded with explosives into the building and detonated, murdering 85 people and injuring over 300. At that exact time this morning, the sirens of every Buenos Aires ambulance, police car, and fire department building sounded in tribute and mourning. With an official ceremony attended by, among other officials from around the world, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Commemorations were also held in cities across Argentina and around the world. It is widely believed that Iran-backed terror group Hezbollah was responsible for the attack, but no one to this day has been brought to trial. And in a landmark move today, Argentina declared Hezbollah a terrorist organization, freezing its assets in the country. Yesterday, Argentina announced the creation of an official terror blacklist allowing for such an action. They are the first country in Latin America to make the designation. U.S. Special Representative for International Negotiations Jason Greenblatt discussed the highly anticipated U.S. peace plan for Israel and the Palestinians in an interview with PBS's Judy Woodruff this week, who asked if there was still a possibility for a two-state solution. The reason we don't use that term is you can't take a, a conflict as complex as this and boil it down to those three words. So we've avoided uh, the slogan, if you will, but the 60-page plan will address everything, including that question. And we've very carefully designed this plan to give everybody as much freedom as possible, but without compromising on security for anybody. Greenblatt also said the U.S. plan does not contemplate a one-state solution. He disputed using the word occupied for Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, but said rather the land was disputed. Woodruff also asked Greenblatt what responsibility do the Israelis bear for the current state of affairs in the Middle East? Um, I think that Israel is actually more the victim than the party that's responsible. From the moment of its um, formation, they were attacked multiple times. They continue to be attacked with terrorism. So I. I'm not sure I understand the premise of the question. I think that they're trying their best to succeed. They've actually succeeded uh, in many ways, especially economically, under very, very trying circumstances. Greenblatt said the president was still deciding whether to release the plan after or before the Israeli elections in September. More information for you today on the recent legislation introduced by Minnesota Congresswoman Ilan Omar, which protects the right for Americans to participate in boycotts in pursuit of civil and human rights at home and abroad. And while Israel is not named in that bill, it is understood that the bill is aimed at protecting the BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Campaign, which seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. It was co-sponsored by Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib and Georgia Representative and Civil Rights Leader John Lewis. Speaking to Congress, Omar called for, quote, an end of the occupation and for a two-state solution. She also mentioned that she would be going to Israel and the Palestinian Authority in a few weeks so that she said, I'll learn more. Omar's bill is in response to several bills from the House Foreign Affairs Committee against BDS. We've been reporting to you about efforts by members of Britain's Labour Party to get its leader, Jeremy Corbyn, to seriously address ongoing accusations of anti-Semitism within the party. Well, today, the head of the Jewish agency, Isaac Herzog, sent a letter to Corbyn calling on him to form an external committee to investigate the allegations, which he, along with many others, claim have been ignored. Herzog wrote, it is difficult to grasp the reckless and dismissive manner in which party institutions treated members who distributed anti-Semitic imagery or engaged in anti-Semitic slander. And staying with the Jewish agency, Chair Herzog had asked for a clarification from Education Minister Rafi Peretz for his hurtful comments earlier this month describing Jewish intermarriage around the world and in the U.S. in particular as a second holocaust. 
Parrott sent a letter to Herzog saying that he didn't mean to insult anyone. He wrote, as one who has always championed Ahavat Israel, love of Israel, it is important for me to clarify that I respect and cherish the entire Jewish people in Israel and in the diaspora. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is poised to become the longest serving Prime Minister of Israel ever, surpassing Israel's first leader, David Ben-Gurion. Ben-Gurion served for a total of 13 years and 127 days. Netanyahu, between his first and second current term, will surpass that number tomorrow, when he will have been in office 13 years and 128 days total. And staying with the Prime Minister, Netanyahu shared on Twitter today that for the first time, Israel was ranked by the United Nations World Intellectual Property Organization's Global Index in the top 10 most innovative countries in the world. Back in 2016, Israel was ranked 21st worldwide, then 17th in 2017, 11th in 2018, and for the first time this year reached the top 10. The exact number will be revealed on July the 24th. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, July the 18th at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud study. At 8, Rabbi Ori Regev discusses the challenge of creating a unified state of Israel that is both Jewish and democratic. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Yaakov Perry, a former director of Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, who discusses, among other things, why he supports the new state solution. At 10.30, the film Wrestling Jerusalem is in the spotlight on new Jewish cinema. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Innovation Israel. And that's the JBS News update for Thursday, July the 18th, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.